Hello everyone. So we'll be starting in a, just a minute. Can you can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yes, perfect. Hello, next. Hello Pascal. So um, I suggest uh, it's five minutes past the hour. So I suggest that uh, that we get started. Uh, Pascal, if you do me the honors for the uh, note well, um, and uh, then I just have uh, uh, a little something in the end of, of, of the chair of the chair slides. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the usual IETF meeting, so it belongs fully to the IETF procedures. Uh, so you need to be very aware of uh, all the best practices that are written on the screen. In particular, uh, we are very sensitive to harassment, so if you're um, uh, witness to some harassment situation, please contact the Ombuds team and you see the, the link to, to, to the team. And obviously, as usual, uh, if you're aware of any IPRs being discussed in this meeting that is not announced, please tell the group or refrain from uh, discussing this IPR. And the agenda for today is uh, just two items. So we'll start with the discussion on the access rules. And um, so there are active discussions right now on the mailing list on the access rules. And then uh, Laurent will uh, present us uh, the next steps on the chic architecture. Next. Yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Pascal. And uh, so here I just wanted to do a short recap of uh, the action items since uh, our uh, last ITF. So we had two adoption calls uh, that we had uh, during the, uh, the, the, the working group uh, meeting. We had uh, uh, a wide confirmation and uh, we wanted to confirm also on the mailing list. Uh, so we've sent uh, this on right after the ITF. And we got uh, positive results for both uh, draft uh, to town access control and uh, draft TOCA uh, 8824 uh, update. Uh, so these were confirmed. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank the authors of um, 8824 uh, update uh, for the submitted uh, ITF version. And we are still waiting for the draft ITF chic access control to be published. Uh, but I know that that will probably happen very soon. Um, so uh, <clears throat> there are two uh, two action items that I would like to uh, uh, to put on the table. So the first thing is uh, we were discussing about the OAM draft uh, at the ITF, and uh, I, I really would like to because I cannot find the actual adoption call for adoption of that draft. So I would like to, to put things in order. And I would like to propose for us to start uh, an adoption call for the uh, uh, for the draft uh, Bartel Chic OAM, OAM uh, for it to become a working group item. Um, so um, let, let's say um, uh, I would like to see uh, just your opinion for the people that are uh, currently connected. Uh, how do you feel about that? Do you do you have um, anything against, uh, or or would you like to have some more discussions before we start this uh, adoption call? So I don't. Yes, Pascal. Yes, it's just that there were a number of items that were discussed as possibly belonging to this uh, OAM document. Mm -hmm. uh, OAM is very large in terms of scope. Um, 
if we focus on things or, 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 or I mean, maybe I was just wondering if the title could be more narrow to what exactly you want to do with this particular OAM document uh, versus the global OAM things that can happen. Just because the title will, will last a long time. Mm. So at the mm. time we adopt, maybe a better title could work. I don't know. Laurent, mm -hmm. you, you, you almost... Yes, it's, it's not just ping, it's uh, all the ICMPv6 uh, message processing. So yes, we, but then we can ICMP. restrict it to ICMP as we have something with, uh, as we have co-op, we can have something on ICMPv6. Yeah, but OAM, well, ICMP can do a lot of things and we won't support them all. I mean, Ripple um, and Neighbor Discovery work on ICMP. We are not working on them. Um, so ICMP is not the right title. Uh, ICMP is just a transport. OAM is probably not the best title either because there are so many things in OAM. Like, I just look at what we are doing in row for OAM or in DevNet. Um, which is not considered here as well. As like something like, you know, I don't know, the probing methods, I don't know. I mean, probing or, or something like that, you know, a, a word. It's, it's not only probing, we have, we have a way to compress error messages. We, we have a, a way to... Yeah. So it's more generic. Checking, or we can, probing. Or integration uh, with ICMP or something like that. Okay, I so, that OAM so, is very large and, and mm -hmm. people would be confused, I guess. I guess OAM people would be confused by the content of this document versus the title. <clears throat> okay, so, so I, I, I understand what you are meaning, what, what you mean here, Pascal. And uh, in, in any case, I, I think that it falls under our OAM charter. Uh, so in any case, it's in, in our charter. And then there is the question of the, the name of the draft, actually. So um, uh, I, 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 I so just discussing the, the scope. Do we have all the features? Um, is it, uh, do we have too many features? I mean, uh, do, did we have all the discussions on the feature set in this document, the ones we want? So, we could adopt and then change the feature set, but it's if we could just do a pass on this document at the next interim, just to consider the feature set and agree that this is the feature set we want to adopt, that I would be perfectly happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you would be in, you would be in 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 opinion to to postpone. So so first the first to, to answer my question is not start the working up working with item adoption uh, today. I would make is sure we do a pass yes, on, discuss, on the content. Yes, discuss the, discuss the content, right? It's like... But th that so. can be done during the adoption call. I mean, ah. if the adoption call asks the questions, please check not just the title, because that's not exactly what it is, or, or uh, check the content and think about, you know, mm. is do we have all the features that look like this? Do, do we have too many features? I mean, and if we get commands, then as part of the adoption, we can we can... Um, you know, get those commands, publish the last draft Bartel with those commands there, and then mm -hmm. adopt it to turn it into draft IETF. I'm just one, not 100 percent sure that that we're there, uh, okay. you know, because we we didn't have so many discussions on the mailing list for a long time on this document. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I I, I I I like what you're saying because it also puts like a some kind of a, a limit. Like, I mean, th there is a reason why we all started the discussion. There is the adoption call. And uh, let's discuss this, uh, uh, this, the exact scope within the adoption call. Um, and and, we'll, and the, the adoption call will continue, like maybe it will be a little bit longer than two weeks. Um, uh, yes, the, the scope is, is the right thing. I mean, yeah. I, I agree with you because if, if people agree with the scope, then the title should be obvious. Because <laughs> okay. the title should be kind of the scope and the content should match that scope. So that's, that's exactly, yes, the discussion that we want to have. What do we want to take to our RSE right now? Which features exactly? What is the feature set? What's the scope? Okay, okay. Um, so um, Eric, is does, does that sound meaningful to you? Uh, is it okay for you? Um, 
probably i mean we can uh, uh okay i mean for 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 uh a write-up then an email ah yes eric yes yeah, sorry it took a while to find a, a new button as usual yes um, yeah it does make sense it does make sense so go go on okay so i'll, I'll write this down i'll write I, I i will write that in the in the in the minutes and uh and then i'll proceed if it's okay for you okay so that was <laughs> That was the, the the first item, and then uh, uh, to do that is remaining is to move from interior to the chic working group, but I'll I'll have to uh, I'll, I'll contact Bob for uh, to do that. And so with this, um, we uh, 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 it's everything from from my side and from from the side of the chair, and we are giving up. Ah, um, yes, and uh, so Ivan wants to share slides. Okay, how can I let me let me accept this? Also, uh, yes, I need to. Uh, Pascal, I think that you need to stop. Uh, okay, I'll do revoke slides and then I'll do this. Um, I don't see the slides yet. I'm not sure if I did the right. Yes, it says on my side as well that the new deck is being shared, but doesn't seem to be coming. Hmm. It's interesting. Once again. Well, Ivan is asking to, to share his them himself, so maybe we can say yes. Yes. I don't know how to share something. Do you have the presentation, Anna? Did? Uh, yes, yes. So it maybe could be better if you share it. Yes. Okay. I'm not sure with this interface. Uh, Pascal, can you share please the access? Yeah, I can. So it is the access control, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. And do you want me to give you the ball? Yes, please. You should have it now. Can you check if you can move the slides, Ivan? Mm, no, I cannot. Um, well, let's go like this, and I will ask each time I need to share. There is the name Amina on the left. Okay, somehow the, the, the magnifying didn't work. So let me, uh, I don't know how it came, but so now it should be okay. Oh, yeah, Raven. yeah. Sorry, I mean, it's just yeah. because Sorry. when you select somebody, the, the, the window gets bigger. I mean, it's the UI, You're getting used to it. Yeah. And so I clicked on the wrong thing at the end. Go ahead. Well, thank you. I will share some presentation we did with Anna and Laurent, just to follow the uh, some conversation we have in the mailing list about the access control draft. So just to wrap up, just, this is just the connectivity, what we can do, where we can apply shakes. So the idea was just to summarize some use cases. So on the vertical side, you have the data rate and then the transmission range. You have several types of networks, some har harvest network like RFID, some fixed networks. So the idea, as we saw before, is to move SHIC from just LP1, which is in the IoT or one x 6 box, to other kind of networks. Then we also have some cellular networks. We had the draft on uh, SHIC for MBIoT. Maybe we will have something else uh, in the future for extreme massive MIMO, for example, for 6G or for 5G with red cap. Then we also have some short range like uh, 15, 4, Bluetooth, DLE, etc. And then maybe Sergio will have something on satellite networks. So, yes, this is just to say that. We got several uh, use cases where we can apply shake. So that's why we need to 
take care of the creation of the rules and the access control of those rules because we are moving from something that, is, that was really vertical in the LT1 topology to something else different. So the usage evolution, we go from the uh, stack we have been working on from several years, which is from LP1, then Chic, IPv6, UDT, Coap. And then we created, it's already standardized, a joint data model within the working group. And the idea is to have a joint data model also for the new uh, use cases we will have. It will be little by little. So the idea was to have uh, something on UDP, on TCP, on IPsec, on ICMP. So there are several works going on. So this this is like the reason why we think we need to have some access control, either or directly on the on the Jan data model. That's why we start with the Jan data model because we already because we already have something standardized on that. So for now, what we propose is to extend this giant data model of what is already done, means on the left side of the slides, and then we can think about what we, what we can do for the other protocols. So our position is that for now, we work on the giant data model that is already done to extend it and to add some behavior that can be uh, applied to that. Uh, data model. So uh, in Chic over LP1, we had some compression of, uh, of abstract descriptions. The idea was that because the traffic was pretty, uh, we, it can be defined in advance, so it will easy to define, also define the rules. So in that case, we had low rates, so there are some little packets from time to time that need to be transmitted. The idea was it need to be on the datagram label. We think that that should be the same for the other protocols because it's more static and it's easy to, to create the rules. And there are little or no changes in the traffic. But this is not the case for other protocols. So the promise we have when we move from Chic over LT1 to Chic over Foo will be how do you create the rules? How do you number the rules? How many changes changes it will be in the if there will be, for example, a flow? Or how this will be changed with time, even if it's a the same session or not. So we need to define some conventions some possibilities define maybe some methods of how do you create or how do you solve these problems so what we have done already so there are three levels so the idea is that at the first level you have the set of rules that you will be instantiated in your in each host on your node name it as you wish so we also define the rule so there are some rules so the idea is to, with this uh, access control, is to either avoid fragmentation, avoid non-compression, to avoid some attacks. And the open question is, do we need to have uh, to control to change uh, some changes in the compression rules or not? So this is the discussion we had on the mailing list now. And... Uh, if we go deeper, we can have access control to some descriptors like the target value, the field ID, and the field ID only for uh, cooperatable uh, uh, fields like um, the URI path. So the, the main question right now is, we believe that we need to have this, uh, this granularity or going into the field ID for cooperatability uh, repeatable item, uh, fields because if not, there will be some attacks that can be, be uh, that can be done, and we also have that idea that it should be more general. So that would be the ideal part, as some people discuss in the in the mailing list. But we do not know how to do it with, for example, these repeatable uh, fields like the URI path. So the question is open, and uh, we believe for now that has that what that what has been already defined in the joint data model can be uh, 
can be done for the co-orbital uh, fields. So these are the discussion points we have. So which are the description, the descriptors? So do we need to limit those values that does not fragilize chic? Do we need to limit those target values that do not change in the protocol definition, like for example, the IPv6 field? Put it in read only, that's what we propose. Only the co repeatable field ID may be changed, that's what we proposed. And the danger to, be, to include some pairs MOCDA. So maybe in some cases, uh, this per MOCDAs can be a security concern. So it might be a good idea to create a new rule just for those changes. So that's all. I the the the, uh, the discussion is open. We are very happy to hear from you if you have some suggestions or questions about that, and we can discuss and move forward. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much uh, for the presentation, uh, Ivan. Um, so first of all, thank you for for uh, the the actually the diagram showing the architectural evolution of the stack from LP1 and Tushik, um, because I think it captures really well the, the changes we, we have today, um, and uh, including also IPsec, which is also an interesting discussion ongoing uh, uh, in parallel. Um, Thanks to Anna. She's the artist. <laughs> OK, well, thank you very much, Anna, um, uh, about this. So. Um, uh yes if we can go just back to the to the previous slide yes um so uh i i uh th these are like uh several open open questions and uh on some of them I, I can have some uh like personal opinion and and we can discuss some uh, on, on some of the others but actually I, I like the way you present this and and probably one of the things is to maybe we can explicitly list like okay well this behavior can fragilize shake or this behavior can uh, yes the, the, like the read read only fields so these these needs to be read only and, and all that so um, okay what I'm trying to say is that the the way you formulate these questions maybe some of them can uh, enter the the draft uh, or the R, the future RFC as options. Like to say, well, okay, well, you can enable this in your shake instance, but it will cause these potential security uh, uh, threats. Yes. Um, or, or maybe we can we can say that, hey, well, it, it's such a this the, the, this like securing shik in like the putting the ACLs in place can be such a big uh, task that we may want to restrict like in the first version of the ACL and say, hey, well, this is like ACL basic and there can be more ex like extended, but to at least to have like a, a, a initial level of, of ACL and security. Uh, Laurent? Uh, yes, can you back to, go back to the previous slide, please? Okay, so I think this this one is is very important to to explain what we want to do. So right now in the draft we wrote the, within the young model we extend the young model of uh, eighty two sixty three with uh, three fields, three new leaves that give some uh, way to modify or not the, the young data model. So, for example, we have one at the top level that considers a, a set of rules and say uh, we have to say, for example, you can add or remove some rule from the set of rules. Then we have the rule and the rule say, for example, so right now it's not totally clear, but for example, for compression rule, we can say you can add or remove fields from a compression rule, an existing one, and then there is on each field of a compression rule, we can say you, we can change uh, what we can change. So we can have a lot of granularity for, for that. For example, we can say we change uh, T1 
TV, target value, we can change uh, the CDA, the matching operator. Uh, and so the question is, do we need to make something very, very precise? Or can we have only some uh, uh, very basic way to say, for example, you just be able to modify the TV, but you never be able to change the matching operator. And in that case, if you want to change it, uh, create another rule, which means that you need the right to do it at a upper level. So which granularity we need and which level of uh, genericity? For example, we are using co-op to say that we can add uh, some URI path or URI query, but that's specific to co-op. And maybe in uh, other protocol we will do, we have to do uh, the same. So that's what we, at which level we do the, the control. We can say, for example, that uh, in the young data model, uh, matching operator and CDA are always read-only and we can never change it. And then we don't have to do some very complex things. So what I will expect from the discussion is to say, for example, first, if these three level of granularity, of granularity for access control is enough, and then what do we put in it? What, uh, if we, you are allowed to change, what are you allowed to change, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, oh, yes, okay, well, it, it, um, I mean, the, the, uh, um, the way I, I, I see it, it looks like, uh, ah, yes, Quentin, please. Thank you. Uh, I believe part of the discussion on the mailing list was because of me, so I'll, I'll just uh, tell why uh, I said uh, uh, I was a bit uh, skeptical by the reasoning, I mean, the reason behind the, uh, the proposal. Um, it seems to me that the main focus on, on this uh, proposal is, is security. And uh, the, the fact that uh, I wanted to discuss is um, I mean, what kind of scenario are we protecting against? Because it seems to me that uh, securing uh, the system by uh, locking pretty much everything, because uh, in the draft, uh, there's even a mention of, of uh, uh, only allowing a modification on target values um, and only for certain fields. Um, so so my, my question is, is this uh, approach good enough uh, for protecting? And for like, what are the scenarios that we are protecting against? Because my understanding is that uh, if we leave only one target value that can be changed in a rule, then we can change that value and make the rule inefficient. I mean, even inoperant because the, the matching operator will never match basically. And so the question is, um, why are we uh, making that? And the, the other question is, um, if we do implement those kind of restrictions, uh, what happens uh, if we want to change a rule, for example? Uh, say that the traffic is evolving, uh, we need to change some value for some reason. I don't know, for example, there's a change in the traffic pattern, uh, there's, there's a co-op um, type that wasn't uh, seen before, and because there's some requests from some host on the internet, uh, we start to see it uh, happening and we need to react to that and we need to change rules. Um, is that something that we can do with those restrictions in place or is this something that we cannot do because of those restrictions? So yes, the question is basically, why are we enforcing uh, such granularity and uh, what are the, the effects of that uh, on, on, on the uh, efficiency of, of applying chic rules basically? But uh, if I may say, um, so since I'm not a, an author of this document, or I'm just looking at it from, from a distance, um, in, in the internet at large, there is certainly a need to ensure that uh, Sheik is not used as an attack vector. So certainly this document will have a very, very big security section. Um, and there will be a 
fields in in Chic, which are expected to be modified. For instance, your IP address, that could be a dollar one or something. So there will be things which will explicitly be written in the rules as uh, modify that uh, in a certain way. Um, and, and then you said, uh, what if we, we, we have some new flows? We have also discussed the capability to add rules which apply to things which match not none of the existing rules. So if, if you have um, a new flow, which is your example, and the rules that we have, none of them match, then it could be acceptable to add a new rule which does match versus modify a rule for an existing match, uh, which is an easier uh, attack vector. So, so uh, I agree with your point that flows can change, but there are differences between something new comes in, in which case we don't affect the existing rules, we just create a new one. Um, versus, but but it's like a default, it comes after all the others have been tried. Versus a new rule which could effectively affect the processing of the existing rules. So th there are two different cases here. And, and there is even a, a third scenario where you would modify one of the existing rule uh, so that it also uh, uh, can be applied to the to the new traffic yes and that so the question the question is this for example say that we have an equal not sent on uh, the type of a co-op uh, field uh, one way to uh, accommodate for a uh, i don't know like a, a confirm that a, appears for the first time would be to just change uh, the not uh, the equal not sent to uh, a match mapping basically, and that's something that uh, is discussed in the document and that is said to be uh, a vector of attack. And I agree, this could be a vector of, uh, of attack, but it's also a feature that we want to have to be able to adapt to new traffic. Yeah. Yes. I believe when you do an ACL in general, and, and I believe the rules have, have a bit that prime, uh, a, a usual ACL in a router um, looks is ordered, right? It's so, so you, you match the first thing, if it matches, doesn't match, if it doesn't match, then you go to a second rule, et cetera. Um, now our rules, I'm not sure we, we, we have that exact feature and to do, to make a difference between what I was saying and what you are saying, um, we would need to have an order. Because if if you have this, if you if you're capable to add a rule which comes earlier in the order than the rules that effectively apply, um, then you could disrupt the rules that follow. If you can only add a rule in the end, which only applies if none of the existing rules work, uh, then it's less dangerous. But then the specific use case that you just mentioned, there would be a rule above the new rule that would effectively already match and then the new rule will, will, would not apply. So, so yeah, there are the cases where you, you would effectively want to do it and the cases where you would not. That's why it has to be enabled or not. And, and you have to say, hey, I'm, I agree to do it or I don't agree to do it. Yes. So, uh, Laurent, uh, but if you can be brief, because we have... Yeah. Mm. No, just to say, I think this, the question is, do we trust the other end? If we trust the other end and we have established a security association between these, these two ends, then we can allow everything. Uh, if we don't trust the other end, so we have to see what we allow or not. Mm. Uh, Yes, I, I totally agree. Uh, that's exactly what uh, I was going to say. Uh, the, the question is is less about uh, leaving an open door to attacks, but more like how do we make sure that the rules that we implement in the network uh, are uh, legit and the legitimacy comes from who's installing the rule, basically. And so this uh, raised the question of how do we secure uh, the installation of new rules, basically. And uh, and and. I would say that's that's the, the main question, and the, is uh, ACL the correct way to to ensure that, or should we use something else? I don't know, like kind of like an authentication to make sure that the people that are modifying rules of a cheap context uh, has the uh, has the right to do it, basically, mm. which is a different problem. 
to me. Yes. Uh, I, I just before giving the word to to Ivan, I, I wanted to to uh, to say that uh, what Pascal said was I I like that very much. The the notion that okay maybe you can do stuff, but if you do stuff, you shouldn't like the rules should not uh, the, the rules for example you create a new rule, it should not be become further like earlier than the existing rules. So at least this provides some kind of a, a protection to like a, a, a diverting traffic from from legitimate sources or something like this. Uh, but um, and it's, yeah. So Ivan. Yes, just to say that in the first version of the draft, we tried to do something like you mentioned, Canton, like trying to define some threat model and some attack profiles. But then the, the document was too spread. So uh, so that's why we we narrowed down it only to the data model. So the idea of this draft is just to say, hey, there is a box of tools to, of what you can what can be done on how to change uh, rules based on the giant data model. But yes, I agree that we should maybe create another draft that will talk about onboarding, on how to instantiate rules, how on when there is flows and et cetera. So, but there is another thing that we can do in parallel or something different that can be used in uh, conjunction with this draft. I don't know what you think about it. Okay, so Quentin, and uh, after that, uh, we're I'm cutting the line because we'll need to, to move to the next discussion. But yes, please go ahead. It's um, well. It seems that the I mean the, the main reason for this for this work is to prevent uh, threats, and uh, we say that we provide a toolbox uh, against those threats. But it's it's I mean it seems that we should first define the threats before providing the tools. Uh, if we want them to be efficient. And uh, the second point that uh, I wanted to mention is that uh, it's we've we've talked a lot about like uh, a rule that would be implemented uh, as an attack to uh, divert traffic from one host to another. And I believe this uh, this is something that we should discuss uh, because I believe that uh, a rule is uh, valid inside a chic context and a chic context is basically two hosts and it means that in the f i mean we should not be able to implement a rule and use a rule to to do this, this kind of um, attack uh, just by definition uh, this is a chic context a chic context is only between two hosts and that's it this this should be the end of the discussion like i don't see a way uh where we would we, we could install a rule that would say okay i'm going to capture traffic from someone else basically mm. oh. unless unless all of the rules are in the same uh kind of like sets of rules and that we are all evaluating them against all of the traffic which should not happen I mean, that's that's an implementation problem i believe that first we should be able to say okay this traffic is coming from this end and then here is the list of rules that we should be applying to to it mm -hmm. but but that's maybe i don't know yes. i may be going too far on that um so yes, I, uh, go, go ahead. So just my, micro micro okay just micro comment maybe go ahead yes i i i wanted to say think think a little bit in terms of uh, the peer that whom, whom I trust is compromised. And is using a rule to perform a scan, uh, an attack on my memory, for instance, like uh, expand beyond buffer size and you know all those attacks that are done in memory uh, against a device. If I if I let a compromised device in front of me change the rules in any fashion, he might be able to to attack my device by doing, because it he could be manipulating my memory. Um, that's just one example. And that's why on top of just trusting the remote end, there are things like those ACLs, which can act as a zero trust type of security on top of the global security that you, that you get by just trusting the other peer. And, and 
for instance, if you if you prevent some manipulations on too many bytes or, or I mean, some rules like that, then you may be able to to defend against a compromised remote host. Yes, uh, uh, excellent point. So, um, very interesting discussion. I think that we should uh, uh, we should continue on the mailing list. And uh, yes, so we have a plus one from Laurent and on, on my side as well. So, Quentin, uh, um, uh, please go ahead and 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 uh, continue the, the exchanges. And we will we'll, we really want to continue like narrowing down on the, the actual on the actual threats. And what Pascal said uh, was also really really important, like the zero trust, the notion of zero trust. So having said this, um, uh, we move on to, thank you very much, uh, Yvan, uh, for, for the presentation. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, um, uh, thank you, Laurent. And so we're going to, we're switching to Laurent to talk about uh, uh, the architecture. Um, so okay, let me find, you, you share the slide. Very good. Well, thank you, Pascal. Okay, so here I, I wanted to present something I, I didn't have time last time at the last IETF meeting because it was uh, at the end. And so I didn't change a slide from this meeting. I just changed to to, to interim. Uh, so I skipped the, the context because uh, why we need this architecture. But I, I wanted to, to summarize what we discussed a uh, few months ago with Pascal on other number of people that we, we call the architect. And uh, the goal is to make some layer chic and also intro introduce uh, the management in, in the architecture. So the first notion we, we introduced what was called a discriminator, maybe the better name now uh, by reading the slide, I will say the origin. So it's the over end, we send the information. So as we say, it can be IP addresses, port number, MPLS label, or any uh, connection ID we, we can have. So it leads to this architecture where all these represent a single node, a single instance. And what when a chic packet arrives, you first look at the discriminator or the origin. And this way, you can distinguish will chic stack you you are going to to use so for example in this example we take uh, the source address so the one that sends the packet as a way to uh, uh, to find which instance we we are going to to use then we have the chic header so the chic header is something new that we we have introduced a few months ago that allow you to carry some signalization for, for chic. And for chic header, we have a specific set of rules. In the chic header, we can have an instance identifier. And when we have look uh, decompress the chic header, we have this in instance identifier. And then we can look on which instance we send uh, the, uh, the chic packet, the rest of the chic packet for a decompression and here also we have for each of them we have a specific uh, set of rules so what we introduce and i talk a little bit about that uh, at the itf session is that we have the management so what we propose to do is to introduce a new kind of rules so we have already compression decompression fragmentation reassembly or no compression and we can introduce some rule id and this rule ID will be tagged as management. And so they will go to, uh, to a place where we can do the management of rule regarding all the access control we, we, had, we will have the defect. So I will not talk about uh, that in, in this presentation, but I wanted to, to show an example for the discussion about uh, some uh, layer chic where we have different instances of chic. We have, uh, so from the top, we have a score that will be uh, compressed, encrypted. Then we put it into co-op. We compress co-op, and then we put into an IP UDP packet that says that we are carrying some chic messages. It goes to uh, a core chic. So the core chic will do the decompression of the first layer. 
and we'll send the packet to toward the destination saying it's chic and then we do the opposite things and for this we have a chic header that tell, uh, will tell which uh, uh, port number we are using because the port number is in that case uh, in the first place used to indicate that it's a chic protocol so here we have an example so notation is not totally good but in fact in in two parentheses it's something that is uh, compressed so the first empty parentheses means that we have no chic header then we have the ip uh, header so the rule id in fact should be inside and outside and then we have the chic header the co-op and the our score that are compressed so here suppose that we are in a kind of uh, lp1 network so you we are on the device size and we receive this packet so here we don't need a discriminator or origin because it's implicit it's come from the network and the first thing we do is to decompress uh, chic header but from the rule we know that this uh, chic header is empty so we send it to the instance we have only one instance an implicit instance and here we do the decompression of ip and then at the end after the decompression we have an ip packet from a to b with udp destination is chic and then the rest is some uh, uh, chic uh, residue and uh, payload so this is the first instance of chic then this packet is they define as chic so we put it to another chic instance so here is the same packet here we use a discriminator so source and destination address and so we go to this instance here we have a chic header so the chic header will tell us which instance we have to use and then we do again a decompression of things and we have co-op or score so we go then to a third instance of chic that is implemented here so we decompress uh, co-op it remains a score and then we uh, we have a score so one point or so that we we can discuss but it's details is that here we not don't have instance for co-op and a store because they are very very linked each to get together so it's not uh, it's not necessary to have a chic header uh, between them so uh, here it's um, so some architectural point of view. The good news uh, we test it in uh, OpenChic and it's very very easy to implement. In fact, uh, there is absolutely no change to do. The only thing we we have to do is to define a rule manager for each set of rules. And so when you receive the first chic packet, you know at which layer you are. So you take uh, the good instance, the good rule manager to process the packet, et cetera, et cetera. So it doesn't change a lot the implementation, but it's, uh, it's very flexible. So here it's uh, a very short overview of this architecture. So now, of course, we have to, to discuss it in, in, in the group and get your, your point of view uh, on that. Okay, thank you, thank you, Laurent. Um, I, I've seen this notation, and yet I think that uh, I'll need some more time to 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 read it again. <laughs> but um, uh, yes, I think that it's very promising that uh, you have already implemented it, and it's um, uh, and it's a uh, straightforward way to to implement it. Um, and actually, I think that this will give us uh, input for the for the sheet header. What information should be there on the sheet header, and maybe for the next draft? <laughs> like I, I, I love ASCII art, but well, <laughs> uh, we have to include it into uh, the chic architecture because now there is nothing written on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I will, I will, I will, I'll need to. Yes, uh, go. Yes, Pascal. Yes, I agree. I mean, we, we have to, to, to basically, the, the, 
we started the, the, the representation at the last IETF, uh, at the IETF before actually, so two IETF meetings ago. Um, but, but the text on the architecture is very light. Uh, in particular, we, we need to make sure we, we define this concept of origin clearly. And uh, from the discussions with Laurent, in my mind, yes, I tend to agree that uh, we have to define the origin as being basically the source of some application in the source. Now, can it be? It cannot be the IP address because some some flows will not be IP. We we can do shake over Ethernet, um, and and there could be applications inside multiple applications which do shake sessions with other applications between one big server and another big server. So, it, the, the origin is not the IP address. So, being able to define the origin is is a big step. Yeah, but uh, there's two things. The origin can be different at each level. level. So, for example, you can imagine that it's an LPL, MPLS label at one uh, position, and then we decompress an IP packet. So now you have the source and destination address, and it becomes the origin for the next layer. Yeah, we need to describe that. And same thing it's, if you are. A, it's it's a, the implicit, which which is a bit more, for, for, because for instance, if you look at LoRa, there is no chic header at all, so it's all implicit. And when it's implicit uh, no, in um, LoRa, it's very obvious that the the hmm. which instance that is, etc. Uh, if you do it over IP, um, and, uh, hmm. yeah, I don't know. just I don't, just one point, Pascal. Here, implicit. Mm -hmm is to say that when you receive something from the LNS, you, you have no other choice than receiving from it. So here you, you cannot distinguish different uh, source of information. But after that, you may have a Shikida. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. That, so, so the origin is, is the, the, the origin that bothers me is the one for implicit. Uh, we have to, to, to find the generic text that explains that correctly. I mean, if you're in, you know, is it really a case by case, technology by technology, depending if you're doing it on Ethernet or doing it on something else, or MCLS, or, uh, you know, where do you pick the, or, or is it some configuration on, on the receiver, which says, okay, when you, when you get a, a packet, which maps, you know, this generic format, then yes, um, implicitly chic is this. Like, would start with IP plus port, I don't know, and, and that would be implicitly some shake session. That, that, that is this mm -hmm. thing, and that's 100% yes. ready yes. to craft. Yes. So, 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 yeah, so I think that we, this probably should be like a separate, even subsection section maybe in the, in the architecture done, shake instance resolution. And, uh, and there we, did, we, we specify this. Has shaken exactly. Well, we need to 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 specify this this tree of mm. instances, right? There is there mm -hmm. is some form of instance tree, yeah. um, but even when you've done that, um, you, you you need to say how you root it, and that, that's you know, but that's so a big subsection in that section of that explains the tree of shaking instances. It's really how you process the root, how you do the implicit first. Hmm. But uh, just to, I think what is important here with the, what we call now a origin is that, for example, if you look really at a device in Nora one with a core, uh, so on the device it's implicit, and on the core it will be the dev UI. Yeah, so we, we realize that it's, hmm. it is a, a knowledge that has to be programmed, at least on the side of the core. Hmm. It has to be programmed, oh, you're doing LoRa, and, and that's the device ID. Uh, and if you're doing something else, that is this something else. Hmm. So, so it appears that there must be something programmed into each device which says how it does the implicit origin. And Maybe that's that's all the text we need, right? And we provide examples. And then if there is a new technology that wants to use check, it will have to provide its own uh, implicit resolution. And it has to be configured into the device in the end. 
Okay, I mean, to me that that I think that we we agree on that uh, we agree on that uh, on, on on this item, right? To and I, I and we agree that it could be uh, like simply a new uh, section or subsection in the in the architectural draft. Um, so yeah. uh, so yeah. I uh, I don't know if um, uh, who would like to maybe insert the section and uh, and then we can discuss that and, and share it on the mailing list. Um, I mean, I, I would be happy to continue working with Laurent on, the, on this topic. Make sure that we craft text, which which are, we are both happy with. We, we had at least two one-to-one -one discussions on that topic, one in red and one at the ATF. Uh, happy to continue, Laurent. So we can we can take that offline and craft that text, and then we'll propose it to the group. With pleasure. Okay, sounds perfect. Um, and with this, uh, we have uh, arrived at the, at the hour, at the top of the hour. So thank you very much all for, for being here. Um, and uh, so Pascal, I'm going to uh, upload the minutes uh, to, the, to the data tracker. So thank you all. And uh, our next interim is going to be in, uh, in January. So uh, happy holidays and see you next year. Thank you all. Okay, enjoy the, the Christmas period and uh, have a lot of fun and snow and presents and good food and everything else. <laughs> family, family, very important family. Yes. Okay, you'll take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.